we might get um, a better grip on that process. Uh, there are also existing constituencies which are required to be open to anyone who is a part of uh, that uh, group. So the uh, intellectual property constituency is supposed to represent anyone who has an intellectual property interest relating to the domain name system. Uh, well, any of you who has ever written an email has composed a copyrighted work, and uh, if you've sent an email or written a web page, you've uh, used the domain name system in connection with your copyrighted works, you've got intellectual property interests relating to the domain name system. Um, if you run a business, if you uh, operate as a consultant, um, you have a place in the business constituency, uh, which currently has only about 30 members, wouldn't be too hard for a whole bunch of small businesses to come in and say, uh, you know, there are other business interests than the big businesses who are currently standing there. Uh, and uh, making that constituency more representative or protesting uh, against its policies if they're set up not to allow uh, that participation uh, could really get the public into the, the domain name uh, process. Uh, spawn some at-large structures. Um, this at-large advisory committee um, may be a cumbersome process. It may be uh, sound like a lot of process and very little substance, uh, but it's got some direct connections into ICANN, it's got some mailing lists, it's got some part of that $46 million budget. Uh, ICANN spent about half a million dollars, uh, or budgeted about half a million budgeted. dollars uh, for at-large uh, last year. So uh, if there's something that your group needs to do, needs to have in order to participate in ICANN, come tell us about it and uh, tell us what you'd need uh, to be more effective participating uh, in ICANN. Uh, go to the feds. Uh, you, ICANN currently operates under a contract with the United States Department of Commerce. That bothers lots of people outside the United States who don't uh, think that the internet should be controlled by essentially a US corporation under the thumb of the US government. Uh, and one of the things that's coming up in the next year or so uh, is a review of that so-called joint project agreement um, where the US government will review how ICANN is performing under its contract and if ICANN isn't listening to what you're saying maybe the US government will the US government has said it's quite interested in how people think ICANN is doing if you think ICANN is doing a great job and the US government should let go tell them if you think ICANN is doing a terrible job and the US government should rein it in, tell them. Uh, if you think that your own government uh, should be doing more to protect your interests in ICANN, uh, lobby your own government. Uh, the, the Government Advisory Committee, uh, although also an advisory committee, uh, has more power than the at-large advisory committee. If ICANN board wants to uh, disobey something that the GAC uh, Yes, that is what the Government Advisory Committee calls itself. Uh, if the ICANN board wants to uh, disregard a GAC instruction, they have to provide specific um, responses and an explanation of why they've chosen uh, to disregard those instructions. So your governments claim uh, that they represent the public interest. Uh, let them know what your public interest is. Um, and finally, as we always say about code, comment it, comment it, comment it. There are lots of places where ICANN puts out uh, calls for public comment. Very often they're filled with spam uh, or with the kind of spam of uh, chain letters from the uh, constituencies who have financial interests in this stuff. Uh, when intellectual property lawyers feel that their trademarks are threatened, they can pour money into it. Uh, when businesses feel uh, threatened, they can pour money and consultants into it. Um, we don't have uh, the money uh, necessarily, but we do have manpower and we should be able to, to get some comments in expressing the other side uh, of many of these issues. Uh, so, uh, we're going to skip over these next few slides, leave them in the uh, presentation deck so that you can see a little bit more about uh, how the GNSO works. 
Um, and uh, we want to encourage you also to make at-large structures. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, oh. at-large structures? No, I mean, it's just uh, what I said already, you know, if you have an organization or you have, um, let's say, um, you are the, um, not I can watch, but government watch concerning uh, data and privacy, um, this organization is a perfect organization to join, an, uh, to become an at-large structure. You just have to, we will give you the link um, right at the end of, of this session. You just uh, click on icon.org and you find uh, uh, in, uh, a link there to, to apply as an at-large structure. It does not cost anything but five minutes time. And uh, you just say, hi, we are very much interested in joining and we would like uh, to give our inputs on a certain issue. And um, this is the way you can do it if you're interested, if you want to, if you care about this global communication platform uh, which is run and established by ICANN, yeah, go ahead. And um, there's a chance. Um, there's a chance that you can also, um, you know, not only listen here at the CCC to some folks, but, uh, but to check it out right there, because ICANN, if there's a regional meeting of ICANN in Europe, for example, here, um, then those at large structures will have the possibility to visit this ICANN meeting, and you can raise your voice right there at the ICANN meeting, take the mic, and um, because ICANN is actually funding your travel then, to go there. So uh, you, you get some more ideas about how things work. You can talk to those uh, nice intellectual property folks and um, let them know what you think. And um, actually, it might sound uh, like, well, what is the talk about? But it is really uh, also a very much um, a personal thing. It, it, is a, it is a matter of who is there. And ICANN is just flooded by all these intellectual property folks. And if there are other people physically there and they're standing up, raising their voice, handing in comments, this helps. So as we said, at-large structure is just eye candies for an organization that's interested in something to do with domain names. And, uh, <clears throat> just a short overview on what organizations here, as we are here in Berlin. Um, these are the current German organizations. Um, and uh, here are the links how to form an at-large structure. All this will be online for you. You don't have to take any notes. And, um, well, Wendy. Um, <laughs> be an independent author, just, just one uh, second. And um, the next European meeting will take place this very summer in June. So why don't you come over? Join the ICANN meeting in Paris, speak up, take the mic, form an enlarged structure, submit public comments. Uh, you're very much welcome to do so. I can only say full steam ahead. Thanks. Before I uh, open the audience for your comments and questions, I'd like to maybe uh, add two small comments on, on why this might make sense or does not make sense. So the one struggle that you will always have as an individual user, as I had as, as a representative of the individual user, was the fight with the governments. Because when you sit in these meetings and you have the government advisory committee meeting, all governments on planet Earth sending at least one, yeah, whatever representatives, some uh, countries even send an ambassador, some send a more informal guy, and these guys stand down in front of you if you raise a position and they say, you know, what are you? You're representing users, but, but what are users? Users are citizens of countries, and countries are represented by their government, aren't they? So who the fuck are you? And I mean, this, this is an important uh, task to see that if we do not integrate ourselves in this process, these governments, of course, being very selfish and having their own interests and protecting their assets, as protecting their power structures that goes in compliance mostly with yeah, business interests in the, in the field of intellectual property others, they will take the role and they will behave as if they would speak for the citizens, which, of course, they do not. So, I mean, next to the question, of course, is the waste of time you're about to do with going to that process, uh, is it worth it? You will have to see if you don't go there, you know, others will take the role. 
But I got one critical question to you both, and that was because Wendy had this idea of saying, you know, if you're not happy with the ICANN, why don't you just go to the US government and tell them that, you know, you're unhappy with the ICANN and they should, you know, abolish ICANN. Of course, I mean, ICANN is, uh, if ICANN is afraid of anything, and that was with every board meeting, you have this conspiracy evening dinner before the board meeting, so all decisions are, of course, made the night before. And you've got the advisors being the, the lawyers of ICANN telling you, you know, no, we shouldn't discuss that in public or we shouldn't vote uh, in that and that direction because, you know, this might really might make upset the U.S. government and they might, you know, pull the strings and so on. So, of course, that is what ICANN is afraid of. But the question is, isn't this a very dangerous idea to play with the devil um, in, in order to, to you know, devil. prevent the good from being overrided or something like that? Isn't that a bit, you know, uncareful? So that, that's a question to you, but that's my last question, so then I open the audience. Well, it's certainly um, a matter to consider. Are we better off consigning this to the U.S. government, uh, to the ITU, as has sometimes been suggested, uh, to the WISIS, uh, UN-organized process, um, or are we better off with uh, the flawed, as it may be, uh, multi-stakeholder, non-governmental, uh, public benefit corporation? And I'm not suggesting that we uh, would be better off with one of these alternatives. I'm here talking about how to hack ICANN because I think ICANN uh, probably is uh, better than most of the alternatives that are presented. Uh, but I think that ICANN needs to be reminded of where its power comes from and uh, reminded of what can keep it in check. Uh, so reminded of the laws that it operates under, both U.S. and uh, international, uh, reminded of the public who, uh, if they're going to be there, even uh, at the edge of the structure, needs to have their interests considered, uh, and not that we should push uh, ICANN to the side, but rather uh, make it the organization that we want it to be. Well, and sometimes life is about playing with the devil. Um, <laughs> talking about what you said, if there are government people saying, well, who are you as an individual user here? Here, I am representing the people, you know, elected and so on. And I say, well, first of all, those government people normally are not government people in the sense that they were elected. Those government people who are in a uh, governmental advisory committee, those are people of the administration normally at least a large part of them is administration people. And I just smile at them and I say, oh yeah, I know that you do something no one else knows about um, in your administration. And um, you know, I'm here to talk with your boss and say, hey, because um, I'm, I'm here to get in touch with the real elected ones. You know, those are, they are just doing their policy stuff and um, we could work together. And, here is something that uh, there was really a step uh, forward um, done by the World Summit uh, on the Information Society, which was um, uh, a very interesting experience over the years because there was one thing why people started listening to individuals and not that much to government. There was a knowledge gap. Um, it was absolutely clear that all those government people had not a clue about the technology. They had no idea what was going on. And they were actually really, uh, they needed us to say, hey, we said, well, you want to you wanna look, uh, you want to set up public policies in the interest of the people. Do you know what the implications of the technology are? And they said, well, sorry, in the third world, they didn't even have a computer. Uh, they had no, they, they did not have the technology and they certainly had no, no knowledge about what are the implications. And so this was actually a sort of a turnaround uh, concerning the, the, the knowledge and, and there was a sort of education process uh, by those uh, individual users and um, a result of this whole uh, World Summit on the Information Society is the Internet Governance Forum where there is now a multi-stakeholder approach saying there are governments, yes, there is business, yes, and there is civil society, and they are there to talk on an equal basis. And that is a new step forward, and we can, you know, 
look at this and give that as a good example. All right. So any questions?